Hello, this is Michael Sulak, and this is the third video in a three video series going through probability examples that are in a practice exam. There is a link for that in the video description if you'd like to get these questions and try them before you see them in this video. The previous videos did the earlier questions, and this video is going to start on number 15. Let's start by reading this question. Michael bikes to Community College of Denver every morning during the school week, and that's Monday through Thursday. Every day, he has a 75% chance to make it to school in less than 10 minutes. Assume his rides are independent, Given the following random variable, so we have a variable here, it's not always the same, it changes, we're calling it x, and this variable is the number of days in a week where his ride to school is less than 10 minutes long. In part A, we're asked to list all the possible values for x. That's the sample space and I could use a capital S to describe the sample space. And so I need to know what's possible. Well, first of all, X is a number. Anything that's in this sample space is going to be a number. The smallest X could be is zero, and the most X could be is four, and it could be any number in between. So the sample space looks like this. So let's continue on. Now we have what is the probability that on Tuesday his ride is more than 10 minutes. We were given that the probability that his ride takes less than 10 minutes was 75%. What this problem asks for is the probability that on a given day, they happen to say Tuesday, it wouldn't matter, it could have said Wednesday or Thursday. What's the probability that on one day his ride is more than 10 minutes long? That happens to be the complement of this event right here. Either his ride takes less than 10 minutes or it takes more than 10 minutes. So to answer this question, if we want to know the probability that his ride takes more than 10 minutes on a particular day, it's 100% minus 75%, 25%. In part C, we have what is the probability that at least one of his rides in a week is more than 10 minutes long? I'm going to do this problem what I think is the quickest and easiest way, which is that if I call at least one an event, then the complement of that is that none of his rides are more than 10 minutes long. The complement of at least one is none. If you don't have at least one dollar, you have no dollars. We're going to find the probability of this event by first finding the probability of its complement. How do we find the probability that none of his rides are more than 10 minutes? Again, the English can be a little bit confusing, but if none of his rides are more than 10 minutes, that's the same thing as all of his rides were less than 10 minutes. That means that on four given days, each ride was less than 10 minutes, which has a 75% chance. And we were told in the problem to assume his rides are independent. That's gonna allow us to multiply. We're going to take the probability for one day to be less than 10 minutes, which is 75%, but it's easier to use the decimal equivalent. And we need that to happen for four consecutive days. All four of the rides in a week need to be less than 10 minutes. So this number is gonna be times itself four times. And when you do that, you get 0.3164. So that's going to allow us to find the probability of at least one, by using the complement rule. The probability that at least one of his rides is long is one minus the probability that none of his rides are long, which is 
what we just found. The answer to this problem is 1.6836. There's about a 68% chance that at least one of his rides ends up being longer than 10 minutes. Now we want a probability model for x. We want a table with all the possible values of x on the left and the probability of observing those values on the right. In part a, we gave all the possible values. We need to find five probabilities. And you could find these extreme cases, zero and four, by using multiplication if you want. But eventually, you're going to have to take advantage of the fact that our variable is binomial. And again, a success is what you're counting. So we're counting rides that are short. And this is the probability of for a given day having a short ride. Each day is independent from the last day. Whatever his ride did on Monday doesn't affect the probability of what will happen on Tuesday, for example. So we have a binomial situation, which means that we're gonna use the binomial PDF function, important that you use PDF. And if you don't have a Texas Instrument calculator, you can still find these probabilities. You could use an applet on the internet. There's an equation for finding binomial probabilities. You could use that equation too. So for example, if we wanna find the probability that X equals zero here, we are going to use our number of trials is four. Our probability of a success, we need to put that as a decimal. We can't use 75, you'll get an error. And then the x value is the zero. We're looking for the probability that x is zero. And that is, it's pretty unlikely. So once we know that this is binomial, we can find all of these probabilities by just changing the x value. So now we want the probability that x is 1. Rounding to the same place, I get 0 0.0469. It's more likely than none. You'll just continue this. You need to use this function five times but the only thing you need to change is the x value. And I'm going to just give you the other two probabilities. That's it. That's the probability model for x. It's all the possible values and the probability of observing each value. In part e, we're asked to calculate the mean of our variable. Another way to refer to that is the expected value. There are two ways you can find the mean of a discrete random variable. The first way is a more versatile way, but it's a longer way. Take the sum of every possible value of x times the probability of observing that value. And this works for any discrete random variable, which is nice. And we'll use it later, actually, in this video. But the shortcut, if you have a binomial random variable, is that the expected value, the mean, it's the number of trials you have times the probability of a success, which you will, might see written as n times p. And this is a lot less math than doing this equation right here. This is nice, but it's only for binomial. But our variable here, the number of rides, is binomial, so we can just use this. And we know our n is 4, and the probability of a success is the probability of a ride being less than 10 minutes long, which was 75%. In a week, we expect that three of his rides will be less than 10 minutes long. And that is mu of x for this binomial random variable here. 
So in this problem, we're still working with the same setup, but instead of talking about a week, now we're talking about out of 20 rides. So we still have a binomial situation. The number of trials has changed though. Now we're looking at out of 20 rides and we still have the same probability of a success. He still has a 75% chance to get to school in less than 10 minutes. We're looking for the probability that X is exactly nine and that nine is our X value when we use our function binom PDF. It's fairly low, 0 0.003. It's low because the further away you get from the expected value, the smaller the probability is. So in number 16, we have a new situation. We are looking at a new variable. It happens to be a discrete random variable and we're given a probability distribution. Here are the possible values of this variable and here are the probabilities of observing those values. And this situation is not binomial. We just have five possible values and different probabilities for selling each of those quantities of cheesecakes on a certain day. So let's start with part A. Find the probability of selling 10 cheesecakes and that's this unknown value here. We're gonna take advantage of the fact that all of these probabilities need to add up to one. If we add the numbers that were given the probability of observing 10 has to be everything left over, 0 0.19. That's the probability on a random day of selling exactly 10 cheesecakes. So in part B, we want the probability of not selling 10 cheesecakes. That is actually the number that we just found. It's the sum of all these different probabilities. Not selling 10 cheesecakes includes zero or five or 15 or 20. It's 0 0.81, 81%. So let's go down to part C, selling at least 15 cheesecakes. So that means 15 or more, which includes 15 or 20, and that's it probability of this event is going to come from adding up the probability of selling 15 plus the probability of selling 20. There's a 56% chance of selling at least 15 cheesecakes. In part D, we want the probability of selling at most 15 cheesecakes. At most 15 is more outcomes. It could be 15, or it could be anything less than 15. So we're gonna to have to sum these together. And I'm actually going to take a little bit of a shortcut here. I can see that the complement of this is 20. So the probability of at most 15 needs to be one minus the probability of selling 20. If I added up these four numbers, I would get 0 0.6 and it's slightly easier to just subtract 0.4 than it is to add up these four numbers. Now we have the probability of not selling at least 15 cheesecakes. At least 15 meant 15 or more. Not at least 15 is what's left over. These three outcomes right here. A problem like this is so much easier when you're looking at the probability distribution just because the words can be challenging. If we want the probability that this happens, I'm just going to add up these three probabilities. And when you do that, you get 0 0.44. And this is definitely not the only way you could have done this problem. You could have used the complement rule as well. It's up to you. Now we have kind of a cheeky problem, selling more than 20 cheesecakes. What's the probability of that? This is every possible value here. What they're giving us is a, an impossible event. 
because more than 20 is not in the probability distribution. And impossible events, the probability is zero. I could have asked, what's the probability of selling a million cheesecakes? Also zero. Now we're at the last problem on the test, which has the same probability distribution for the number of cheesecakes that are sold. But now we're talking about what's the probability that you sell exactly five on three consecutive days, so three times in a row. And if we assume that the given days are independent, that means that we can multiply. We're going to take the probability of selling exactly five on one day, and we need that to happen three times. So we need to take this to the third power. If we had two consecutive days, we would take it to the second power. And when you do that, you get 0 0.003375. Now in part B, we want the probability of seeing more than five cheesecakes sold, and that's still on three consecutive days. So we need to figure out what's the probability of seeing more than five on one day. And so more than five means 10 or 15 or 20, and we get 0 0.75. We need that to happen on three consecutive days. 0.4219 if I round a little bit. And once again, we're just using the multiplication rule for independent events. We're assuming that each day is independent of the last. So we've made it to the last problem and the last part, which is find the expected number of cheesecakes sold on a given day. We can't use the shortcut binomial formula for finding the mean of x because this is not binomial. We need to use the formula that looks like. So you multiply these two things together and add them, and you have to do that for every possible value of x. We're going to have to take these pairs of numbers here and multiply them together and then add them. So what this will look like, you get these pairs of each possible value matched with its probability. And because we have five for this distribution, we end up with five sums. And the result for the expected number of cheesecakes is 13.05. That's not an actual possible value for a given day, but that's fine. It's the long run average. On a given day, they could sell less than this. On a given day, they could sell more than this. But on average, they can expect to sell 13.05 cheesecakes every day. That concludes these example problems. I hope you found this video series helpful. If you have any questions about anything, please leave a comment or send me an email. Thank you for watching, and this is Michael Sulak. I will see you next time.